Welcome to another episode of Chess Concept for Intermediates. This is almost 1200 ELO now, and we have an end game here, many end game concepts here to learn. And uh, let's dive into the game. E4, C6, the Garb Khan, Queen H5, they still play this? Okay, D5, still the best move. So he pushes. Now we go G6 here, right? Attacking the queen, mm -hmm. and now the queen has been booted out to e2. We have gained a lot of development. We should play e6, c5, and actually, well, yeah, bishop out first, perhaps. Then you block it with e6, then there, and uh, you have a very nice position. You will castle them. I go bishop c7, d4. I should go e6, maybe 7 and castles, but instead I play f6. Now the engine, the engine says that this is 0, 0, 0 is the best move, but look at this. If he pushes, you play queen d6, yes, and you win the pawn. And if he takes, you get the knight in. Very nice. But what if they don't take? What if they don't take because they know about the concept of keeping the tension? and they move the bishop up like this. Well then, you already want to develop this knight, yeah? Except that it blunders. Well, what does it blunder? Uh, your opponent has two captures. One of them is good, one, and one of them is bad. Well, let's look at the captures then. If we take the knight that just appeared here, the bishop takes, and we take this, the pawn is pinned. But if you take the pawn this way, your bishop is now overloaded. It has to go back, otherwise you lose the knight. And now you take this pawn here, because after this exchange, you're up a pawn and white pieces are better here because black, black just, um, I don't know. Black just has his pieces, really. But after knight h6, bishop takes. You have traded bishop for knight. This is a nice di diagonal. And now, after this, black has two pieces in play. King is active and no pieces in play. That's why. Now, <laughs> bishop c1 here, going for this, is the best and uh, you lose the pawn so you lose like you lose exactly two pawns in this process which is pretty nice attack pretty nice attack but the bishops we may not see that the bishops go this far and it's tough to believe that that would be the best move so we develop we develop kind of normally um you push there which was okay so we should play now maybe b5 but actually no knight develop the knight bring the bishop out okay king f6 we are going to hide our king perhaps or open up the e file that's good as well that loses a pawn okay let, let's uh let's see where we can improve on here let's see the concepts then well maybe let's wait until we exchange some pieces um I go for this, trying to put the bishop into a passive square. We disallowed it. We make a double pawn. And uh, uh, I should have put the rooks in the second rank. I lose this pawn. And then it protects it, protects it. We go there. And we kind of like shuffle here, but the bottom line is that I'm down a pawn. I am down a pawn here. Look for checks. They win. They do win time here because now the king is a little bit passive here. I go b5, going for some push. He goes as well. But now that allows king h6. Uh, but that's what I do find. Although there is rookie one. Rookie one, and 
if I go for a check here, then he trades off. He tries to trade off, and I do not want to trade off rooks here. Instead of king h6, like, I don't want to bore you with uh, some best moves here, but I should have gone to the second rank still. I still should have gone to the second rank, where I don't allow this rook to move. If he tries to move these pawns, I make a passed pawn myself. So, so good. Instead, I allow this, and he finds it. He goes active as well, targeting my pawns. I try to push forward to make a passed pawn. You should do that as well. You should do that, since he has passed pawns. He should have gone for these pawns here, and it's tough for me to defend them. If I go there, he, I, he takes, and then he targets it again. Like, yeah, that would have been very nice, but instead he plays a4, and that allows me on Poisson, and this time it is a very nice one because we have a passed pawn to go. I have to go for this concept here. You have to go for this concept. You need to support this pawn and not allow rook c5. Because if you go c3 away, right away, there is rook c5 and I lose the game because I cannot card this like this that easily. He gives a check, I go back, and the king comes forward, and this is lights out. But instead, he goes king e4, attacks, he does go for attacks here, yes, but you had a check here, you had a check, and this wins time for the pawns, but I should have gone rook d1 here, don't ask me why. I go for this pawn, he goes back, I go back, let's make a draw. King da -da -da -da, a4. There is still no way to win this. Oh, I'm banking on this, then check and rook c4. Wow, what a way. What a way to make counterplay. But instead, king e4, I go for this again. He gives a check now, but king is not forced to g8, g7. Check and h6 okay now this is looking very disappointing if i trade rooks you don't trade rooks in an end game when you're down a pawn but i do go for c2 the only move and now he has to go for this rook c6 or does he does he have to go for rook c6 because h7 if i make a queen he makes a queen with check and it is checkmate. So after h7, I have to go for rook g rook takes g4, and if it takes, we get the queens at the same time. And he has to play king f5, but then I play the only more rook f4. If he takes, I make a queen with check. So he goes king e5, and I almost lose, right? There's rook f8. Um, no, I meant rook f8 here. So, but then, I mean, this this is a crazy endgame. A crazy endgame, oh my goodness. So, that's one of the lines that got really cool. But he played rook c6. He played rook c6, does not go for the push. And I take this with check. It is still winning. It is still winning. Okay, let's turn off the ego. Why, do, why are we looking at this? How do you draw this? After this is attacked, I, I guess give checks and uh, rook h5 here. And if this, uh, if this, we go king g5 here. And if he pushes, No, sorry. Uh, I, I can't. I cannot without the Starkfish. I'm sorry. This is still losing. This is still... This is still losing after King H5 because there is H7. There is H7. And we cannot stop the pawn from promoting. But instead, he takes 
this one and that allows me to take that one and we have cancelled out each other's pawns and the way and the reason why this is not winning for white this is not winning for white because this is edge these are edge pawns what happens here is we rush our kings to that side and i just sleep in the corner here I sleep in the corner the easiest way to draw this just sleep in the corner back and forth and you can do nothing but draw now let's look at this on this side of the board if this was the if this was the position these are now b pawns this is winning for white because white can make the opposition after king a7 no he can play king a7 and the opposition is clear here that the king cannot stop the pawn but after but in this line when there is a, when these are a pawns after uh, king a6 king b8 the king cannot walk off the board there is no square past this a file so that's why this is drawable sadly i mean unfortunately for me we drew this game very nice stuff about king and pawn end games you have to calculate this stuff ahead if a pawns it's a draw if b pawns it's not a draw c pawns not as well because of opposition so if you like this video let me know and i will make some more i really enjoy making this kind of educational content so if you demand it i supply it thank you and we'll see you next time